Hey guys, welcome to our first online story time at here at the barn. We're excited to jump onto your feed today and share a story together that I'm going to read and also talk about one of my favorite places in the world, Kenya. So welcome. We're glad you're here. I'm going to be reading Mama Panya's Pancakes. It's written by Mary and Rich Chamberlain and it's a village tell from Kenya. Mama Panya sang as she kicked sand with her bare feet, dousing the breakfast fire. Adika, hurry up, she called cheerfully. Today, we go to the market. Surprise, I'm one step ahead of you, Mama. Adika stood in the doorway, dressed in his finest shirt and cleanest shorts. I'm ready. Now Mama Panya had to hurry. After storing her pots, gathering her bag, and slipping her feet into her sandals, Mama Panya called, I'm ready too, Adika. Where are you? Here I am, Mama. Two steps ahead of you. He sat under the bobob tree, Mama Panya's walking stick in hand. Why, yes you are. She accepted the stick and led them down the road. What will you get at the market, Mama? Oh, a little bit of this and a little bit more. Are you making pancakes today, Mama? You are a smart one. I guess I can't surprise you. Yay! How many pancakes will you make? Mama fingered two coins folded in the cloth tied around her waist. A little bit and a little bit more. Rounding the corner, they saw Mizzy Odala sitting by the river. Habari za subuhi, Mama asked softly, so she wouldn't chase away the fish. Adika blurted out, we're having pancakes tonight. Please come. Adika, Mama whispered in his ear. Mizu Adolo waved back saying, Asante Sana, I'll be there. Mama quickened her pace. We have to invite Mazi, Adika said. He's our oldest friend. Hurry up, you're a few steps behind, Mama replied. Look, Mama, it's Sawandi and Naaman. Adika's friends tapped long reeds against the thighs of their cattle, moving them along. I'll be just a few steps ahead. Wait, Adika, Mama called. Mama hadn't gone too far before he returned. They'd be happy to come, Adika panted. Mama Panya frowned, thinking about the coins in her wrap. Oh, how many people will that be? Let's see, Salandawi, Naaman, you and me, Adika counted, and Mizi, Odala, that's only five. Ay, how many pancakes do you think I can make today, son? I'm one step ahead of you, mama. You'll have a little bit and a little bit more. That's enough. At the market, there were many buyers and sellers trading fruits, spices, and vegetables. Adika spotted his school friend, Gamilla at her plantain stand. Mama, she loves pancakes. Now, now, don't you? But before she could finish, he had run to greet his friend. Mama tried to catch up, arriving just in time to hear, you will come, won't you? Of course, Gamilla replied. Mama shot a stare at Adika and quickly grabbed his hand, whisking him away. Mama, we'll be able to stretch the flower. Ay, 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 how much do you think I can stretch our flower, son? Adika waved his hand in the air. Oh, a little bit, a little bit more. At the flower stand, Mama said, Adika, you sit here. After greeting Bibi and Buana Zawina, Mama asked, what can you give for me for my money? She offered the larger of the two coins to Bibi Zawini, who scooped up a cup of flour onto a piece of brown paper. Adika popped up, Mama's making pancakes today. Can you come? Oh, how wonderful. I think we can give a little more for that coin. Bawana Zawini put a second cup on the flower, then tied it up with a string. We'll see you later. Mama tucked the package into her bag. Ay, ay, ay. You and I will be lucky to share half a pancake. But Mama, we have a little bit and a little bit more. Come, Adika, keep up with me. We may have just enough left for some small chili pepper. Leave it to me, Mama. I'll get a good one. No, Adika, she cried out, but he ran ahead to Rafiki Kaya's spice table. Mama got there just in time to hear, Mama's making pancakes tonight. Can you come? I'd love to, Kaya exclaimed. 
She grabbed the coin from Mama's hand and replaced it with the plumpest pepper. That's just enough. Thanks for inviting me. Mama just sighed. They headed home. How many people did we invite for pancakes tonight? Adika, skipping two steps ahead, sang his reply. All our friends, Mama. Mama piled small twigs and sticks into the fire pit. Adika ran to fetch a pail of water. Mama crushed the chili pepper in a pot while Adika added some water. She stirred in all the flowers, seeing there would be none to save. Mama poured a dollop into the oil pan on the fire. So Wandi and Naaman were the first to arrive, shouting, Hody! Adika called Caribou to welcome them. They carried two leather drinking gourds filled with milk and a small pail of butter. Mama Panya, we have extra from our cattle. Mizzy Odalo came soon after. Old Man River has given us three fish today. Gamilla arrived with a plantain bunch perched on her head. They go very well with pancakes. Bibi and Buana Zuwina brought a package filled with more flour and handed it to Adika. Store this away for later. When Rafiki Kaya arrived, she brought handfuls of salt and cardamom spice along with her thumb piano. And the feast began as they sat under the boba tree to eat Mama Panya's pancakes. Afterwards, Kaya played the thumb piano and Mizi Odalo sang slightly off key. Adika whispered with a gleam in his eyes and a smile on his face, I know you will make pancakes again soon, Mama. She smiled, yes, Adika, you're one step ahead of me. Three words for village life in Kenya. The people, Kenya is made up of many different peoples. Most are black Africans. There are also Asians, Europeans, and others. Many Kenyan people like Adika and Mama Panya live in rural areas. Village life. Most village people farm and take care of cows, goats, and chickens. Others might work on a tea or coffee plantation. When work is done for the day, villagers might tell stories under the stars and listen to the music of the thumb piano or a mimbira. For school, children like Adika go to school, but it is often a very long walk to their classroom. Very few Kenyan families own cars and there are not many paved roads. Where the government has not been able to set up schools, many villages have created their own classes. These are called Haram Bay, which means pulling together. Haram Bay is also Kenyan's national motto. After school, when they are not in school, older children might help with chores such as collecting firewood, taking care of their younger brothers and sisters. They might also play games such as BOA, an African board game of strategy and football, which is our soccer, and running is also really popular. And here are some vocabulary words, walking to the market, on the walk to the market, Adika and Mama Panya see many animals, insects, reptiles, and plants. Here are a few examples. An agama or rainbow lizard is a male rainbow lizard that has a pretty red head and blue body. They love to bob up and down doing push-ups. Isn't that pretty? An acacia tree, also called the thorn tree, has sharp spikes it's that surround the leaves and they're eaten by giraffes. I've gotten to see giraffes in Kenya eat these trees. The boba tree is a large tree often called the tree of life because it stores so much water. Its branches look exposed, like exposed roots, but it's not upside down. A butterfly, you guys all know what butterfly is. There are many kinds of butterflies in Kenya. You might see swallowtails, which are the largest butterfly in the world with a wingspan the size of two large hands, kind of like a bird. A goat, everyone knows what a goat is, right? The small East African goat is found all over Kenya. These goats can survive on land that is almost barren, yet still produce lots of milk. There are big piles of trash all over the country in the slums, and goats are often found eating right out of that trash pile. Maasai cattle, many Kenyan tribes measure their wealth in accordance with the number of cattle they own. Maasai cattle are used mostly for their milk. A mongoose, this is a weasel-like creature that lives in large families and feed on rodents, birds, and even snakes. Although they are cousins of hyenas, they're very friendly and sometimes kept as pets. How many of you moms out there would like to have a pet mongoose? A palm tree. There are many species of palms in Kenya. Palm fruit leaves and bark are used in lots of products such as soap, roofing materials, and rope. 
And lastly, tilapia, which you guys have probably had for dinner, live in harsh conditions like the hot, salty, and alkaline waters of Lake Nakuru. Speaking Kiswahili. Kenyans speak many languages, but the main ones are Kiswahili and English. Swahili refers to a group of people also known as the Waswahili, who live along the east coast of Africa from Somalia to Mozambique. The word Swahili literally means coast people, and Kiswahili means speaking the language of the coast people. Kiswahili is a mixture of Bantu, a native African language, Arabic, which is a Middle Eastern one. In a village like Adika, his people might speak three languages, a local language, Kiswahili, and English. The local language is sometimes called a uh, tribal language. Greetings are expected upon meeting someone. It is considered rude not to greet another in the appropriate way. As a visitor, you may hear the simple greeting Jambo, which means hello. Here are a few more. Asante Sana means thank you. Bibi means lady, or madame, or miss. Bawana is sir or mister. Habazari Asubi, what's new this morning? Hodi is a customary greeting of approaching a friend's home. Caribou, you're welcome. Mama, a title of respect for a woman. Maze, title of respect for a man. And Rafiki means friend. A few more facts about Kenya. You can fit France inside of Kenya with a little room to spare. To walk across Kenya from Lake Victoria to the Indian Ocean, it would take over 1 million steps. The Great Rift Valley is one of the most spectacular geological features on earth. It runs through Kenya. It is a geological fault that will eventually break East Africa off to form an island. I've been to the Great Rift Valley and the migration of animals happens there and it's absolutely beautiful. Mount Kenya is the second highest spot in Africa. Even though it's on the equator, it's covered with snow. Lake Victoria on Kenya's western border is the second largest lake in the world. Can you find it on this map? It's part of the White Nile. The largest lake in Kenya is Lake Turkana in the north. Here's Lake Victoria. Nairobi is Kenya's capital city. Our homes for teen moms is out, actually outside of Nairobi about 30 minutes. Maasai cattle herds who use this land called it Enrique Nairobi, which means cool water country. The main seaport of Mombasa was settled by Arab traders over a thousand years ago. It's an important link between Kenya and the rest of the world. Can anyone find Mombasa on here? Here it is right here. Wildlife parks in Kenya have protected borders where some endangered animal species live. Savo National Park is the largest reserve and the Maasai Mara is one of the most popular with tourists. And here's Mama Panya's pancakes. Okay, moms, get your pencils out because you might want to try this. I like anything spicy. Pancakes are eaten all around the world. They have different names in different countries. Here are a few examples. In Scotland, they're called bannocks. In India, they're called chapati. France, crepes. China, bao bing. In Russia, they're called blinis. In Indonesia, they're called dardar gutong. Egypt, kata if, I'm excellent at pronouncing names. Um, arepas in Chile, tortillas in Mexico. Many Kenyans like to wrap food inside thin pancakes. Would you like to try Mama Panya's pancakes? Here's a recipe that you can try at home. Makes about six pancakes. The recipe, and we'll include this in the notes below, but the, it's flour, cold water, vegetable oil, cardamom, or nutmeg, and a little bit of red pepper flakes. You probably have all of those eight ingredients at home. You mix it up and uh, cook it like a pancake. So we'll include the recipe in the notes. I wanted to point out a few items that we sell at Mercy House Global that are from Kenya. So this is actually a soccer ball they call it football in Kenya, that's made completely of trash bags. This is a very common toy in Kenya when there's maybe only two coins that a mom has. Um, when she goes to the market, she's not buying toys for her kids, she's buying ingredients for pancakes. So I love how industrious people around the world are and kids love to play. And so they take these trash bags. We had our women in Kenya make these for you guys to learn 
how other kids in the world play with toys. So we use clean bags and then they tie rope around it to form a soccer ball. And it really works. It's amazing how great it works. So we have these for sale at Mercy House Global. We also have these really fun um, make your own bracelet kits. So all of our paper beads come from Kenya. They're rolled paper out of magazine. You could actually have your mom Google um, how to roll paper beads and you can take a magazine and do that as a really fun craft and maybe that's something we'll include in the notes too. But you can order these pre-made um, beads that you can make the bracelet at home if you want. And then the last item we wanted to tell you about are these incredible mats. The grandmothers of the girls in our maternity homes are part of a group called Mujiza and they weave these rugs at looms five days a week. And we're excited because this mat is actually now $39, which is an amazing deal. So if you're sitting at home and you need a new mat for your door, you can get one at Mercy House Global and talk to your family about how it's providing dignified jobs in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining into our online story time. I hope you guys learned a little bit about Kenya and make sure you tag us on social media so we can see what, what you've made. Thanks. Hi everyone. We hope you liked that book, Mama Panya's Pancakes. Um, it's one of our favorites. And so I wanted to invite you into our home, actually in our front yard, and we are gonna um, show you a game that we like to play with that book. And it's just um, a fun game that hopefully will help you teach your kids um, some Swahili words. Okay, so I have um, my two girls here, I have Allie and Gracie and our friend Kendall, and they're gonna help me show you guys how we played this game. So we, did, we started with a few materials that we think you guys would have at home. Um, we've got um, some construction paper, some brown paper, um, but you can use whatever you have at home, but we are trying to make these look like pancakes, so we use brown paper. Um, and then we used um, just a Tupperware dish or anything that you can trace that makes a circle. Um, and then just markers and scissors. And so what we first did is the girls um, cut out, they traced the little glass Tupperware onto the paper and they cut out circles. And then on the other side of the circles, um, they wrote, we have a chart here and we're gonna include these words in the attachment. Um, but it's the word in Swahili and it's the word in English. And so on the pancakes, the girls wrote the word in Swahili and then they wrote the word in English. And so we're gonna play a matching game um, to match these words. I feel like gonna be like a so the girls are spreading out the pancakes. So this is just like memory match. If you've played memory match with your kids, then you will know how to play this. So Allie, do you want to go first? Sure. All right, so she's using tongs, but you could use a spatula or anything you have at home. So the object is for the kids to turn over two at a time. And then we have the chart here that they can check their answer. And if they have the, the matching words, then they get to keep um, those pancakes. Uh, this is John Bell. John Bell. Oops. Yay! <laughs> so Mama is the same in English and Swahili, so. What are you looking for? Jumbo. 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 Yay! <laughs> oh, uh -oh. So as you can see, the point of the game is um, whoever gets the most pancakes at the end will be the winner. Um, or you can just play for fun. But this is a good game. We have the girl. The girls are saying the word in English and Swahili, and so they're learning. Um, 
<laughs> they're learning the language. Oh, good, Kendall. All right, so we hope you guys love this game. Make sure you check out the attachment that we are sending and uh, adding to this so that you'll have lots of other fun ideas to go along with this book. All right, thanks girls. Can you guys say bye? Bye. <laughs>